Okay, I'm ready to start this thing with the, the new big coils on it, and we're going to see what happens here. You want to put an amp meter on the input when you're doing this because if you have a short, a dead short or something, it's going to show up on your amp, input amp meter. So we got a variac here. We're going to turn the variac on and bring up the voltage. Whoa, see, see that jump? Something's wrong. That just showed eight or nine amps. Got a dead short somewhere. So I'm going to have to take a look here and see what the problem is. Okay, what I did is I pulled the ground wires on all of the control boards because they're just hooked on. I just put a little blade connector so I could disconnect each coil individually. So I'm going to turn this up again. And as you can see, not a problem now. So we're going to hook them up one at a time and check each individual coil by hooking it back into the ground system. And I should be able to identify which one is causing the draw. Not that one. Let's see if it'll run on just the one, if it'll run on one coil. You hear that sound? That is one. Take it up to about 120 because it. Okay, there we go. That's one, and it's pulling. 0.4 amps. I've got three of them hooked up and I went to hook this one up here the third one in line up and I don't know if you can see that or not but there's a little um, let's see there we go see that right there that's the culprit when I went and touched this to the ground because one of the chips is faulty it allowed the current to flow that was stored in the capacitors and it just melted that sucker. <laughs> so I jumped to the next one. And uh, I've hooked up three now. One of these chips is bad. I use these chips in different experiments. They're all not brand new chips. So, you know, I guess I should have tested them all to make sure they were all good and I wouldn't have had this problem. But, you know, you know how it is sometimes. So let's uh, get this thing going and try three. You got about 120. Alright, 120. Three coils is 0.8 amps. And it's pushing the wheel pretty good there. It's climbing slowly from where I had it. So, and you can see the charge batteries now are starting to get a little bit of this current. It's a 12.05 volts on the charge batteries, and they're starting to climb. So let's run this a little hotter here. Now that's got some push to it with three of those. You can always tell when these are working. You can hear them. They resonate. So when your coils are working, you can hear them. So that's running three coils. And now the voltage, the amperage is going to climb the faster the wheel goes the more the gate is open the more current is flowing to the batteries so now one amp we're, we're running one amp of energy at 138 volts through through the coils to the charge batteries which are being pulsed so the batteries are adjusting to that voltage so let's take a look at it over here and see. I'm giving you this stuff in DC because we're switching the meters a little tough there. 
Okay. So what the meter says is we got basically 5.8 amps going into the batteries at 12 volts. That's a weird noise. So, let's recalibrate this here. So, oh, put it on backwards. difficulties there. So for some reason that's reading negative in both directions. It's re reading negative 2 amps. I think my battery's bad here. And that's reading negative 7. So I'll have to change the battery in that. So let's get this one rolling. I changed the battery and I should have changed my batteries and all my test equipment. So let me thought maybe I would get away with using one of them without recharging it, but no. Got to watch um, using a variac on on these motors because at low voltage you could draw too much amperage and pop the fuse if you're not careful. You want to not try running it with these large coils, you know, enough of them. You don't want to be running at 20 volts or 12 volts because you could be drawing way too much amperage through your fuse. The higher frequency, you know, well that's just can't be right. That's saying negative seven. Okay, let's calibrate this guy again. Now, put it on there. Now, see, that's give, it, giving me a negative number. both directions, which is completely impossible. Um, I'm going to have to figure a way. It might be, I've got these spinning magnets. This works on induction. So if you notice here, I can get four or five amps with this end of the thing being too close to the moving wheel. So I suspect there's a coil right behind that. It's messing with my settings here. I'm going to have to put an inline amp um, if I want to get it on the out on the input here. So, so we got six amps going into the batteries. I'm going to have to rig up an inline amp meter. Uh, This is, uh, working. I'm not sure what that rattle is. You know, it's the first time I ran this thing, so. Oh, never mind. My bad, I left something sitting there. So, that's kind of where we're at. Now, we're running on four of the six coils. One of them I'm going to have to fix, but I wanted to see if I could get it on all five before I. Uh, start fixing things here and I'm gonna have to shut you off for here for a little bit here while I rig up an inline um, amp meter on the input and I want to test this real quick uh, I got the variac on and if I bring this up slowly here you can see there's no draw so there's nothing wrong with the fifth 
coil. It's just um, the one at the top there. So th that one's going to work fine. I'm going to go ahead and fix this. I did want to show you something here. I've got a variac hooked up here. Now these caps are retaining energy and I'm going to have to work on this. So the first thing I want to do here is flip that off and then the, the coils are going to suck the excess energy out of the co uh, um, capacitors. You can see the voltage drop down to 1.8 volts. So now it's safe to work on this thing without electrifying myself. <laughs> I wanted to make sure to dissipate my capacitors. Now I haven't dissipated the output capacitors at 12 volts, just the input ones at 120 volts, which would definitely mess up your day. So I just wanted to bring that up because I don't want to see anybody get hurt out there. And uh, Okay, I wanted to put my headset on here and go into diagnostic mode and figure out what's going on with this. So what I did here is I hooked the ground up to a meter with checking continuity. As you can hear, we have full continuity from the positive to the negative. That's where the amp draw comes from. So what I'm going to do is pull these chips out and determine which chip is bad. Now any one of these three chips can be bad, so we pull the first one and we still have continuity, so I'm going to take the next one out. Sorry guys, it's kind of hard to focus on that laser beam when you're trying to think about what you're doing. Okay, pull that one out. There we go. The center chip was bad. Well, the center one was bad. Let's see if the first one was bad. I think the first one was okay. It's just the center one. I'll replace the chip with another chip. Not a new chip, but another chip. And we no longer have a dead short, no continuity, so the motor is good. Everything seems to be working. Uh, motor should run on all six coils now. So I'm going to hook this up and hook the amp meter up and we'll take it from there. Alright, i got it hooked up. I've got a meter run through um, for the coil. I fixed the other coil. Just going to run all six of them for you guys. And now we got the amp meter out of the way so it's not being affected by the spinning magnets. And we got the tack ready so we are going to fire this thing up. So, oh, big difference there. Up to 120. That's pretty good right there. There we go, 160. I'll leave it right there. They're rated at 160. Of course, I think they'll go higher. Yep, 15 amps. The batteries are at 13 volts. 1.9 amps in at 158 volts. It's flying. That's great. Well, she's running, fellas. 